Good day, folks. Welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. If you're here for the very first time, please do well to subscribe to this channel because I post latest updates on M&E. Today, we're going to be looking at Monitoring and Evaluation exam questions and answers. So please feel free to take full advantage of the timestamps because this is a long video. We're going to be looking at each and every question in this question paper. So some of these questions are questions that you would face in an actual exam, especially if you're at the university or if you're at an institute, these are practice questions. So I, I thought as my friends, we need to discuss these things so that you can excel. Some of my students who've enrolled in this course, I want, I am appealing to you to take full advantage of this segment in the M&D Made Simple channel so that as you prepare for your exams that we issue, you can pass with high flying colors. All right, so let's get started, shall we? Number one, what is monitoring and evaluation? So monitoring and evaluation is, this is one of the most basic things everybody should know. And to uh, just define it, m and is about tracking and continuous learning. So, of course, you'll find a way to expand it, but all in all, it's about tracking to see whether the planned activities are indeed achieving the, I mean, activities are being implemented as planned, and to see whether the project indeed recorded the change that you wanted to see, okay? So monitoring is continuous tracking, evaluation is measuring the change. So you find your own way to construct that sentence because there's a lot of resources on the internet on what monitoring and evaluation is. So now let's go to the six differences between monitoring and evaluation that you can think of. This again is a good question and I have to tell you that you don't need to memorize these things because they should be at, the, at your fingertips. Number one, monitoring is done throughout the project. Number two, evaluation is done at a certain point in time, at certain points in time. Monitoring is done to track. Evaluation is done to measure change. Monitoring is done throughout the project cycle. Evaluation is done at certain points. I think I mentioned that. But I'd also want to mention that monitoring is usually done at the input and output levels of the project. But when you talk of evaluation, it's done at the outcome and impact levels okay monitoring can be done by internal staff evaluation in most cases is done by an independent consultant okay so can you see the way i was coming out with the differences even if perhaps i've mentioned five out of six i mean it was at my fingertips so that's how that's the stage you should reach guys but if you want to know the differences, just go on the internet. There are so many differences. This shouldn't be hard. You can even mention monitoring measures routine indicators, evaluation measures non-routine indicators, okay? Question three, what is the difference between an M&D plan, M&D framework, and M&D system? So the difference is that the M&D system is all-encompassing it includes the M&D framework, it includes the plan. The plan actually details how you're going to do the M&D activities, when you do them, and what resources are required. So now, the M&D framework is actually a subset of the plan. In short, it's inside, it's part of the M&D plan. Okay, so do your research. You're going to find that this is very true. 
when you talk of the MND, MND system, it's all encompassing, encompassing, it includes everything. I've always mentioned this in my past, uh, past videos. So let's go to section two. I don't want to keep you here for a very long time. I just want you to appreciate some of these questions. Remember, you can download this question from uh, a link I'll leave in the description. So imagine you are hired as an M&D consultant to build an M&D system for an organization. In your activities, you refer to the project log frame from time to time presented in figure one. So figure one, that's the log frame matrix, okay? What is a baseline survey? So a baseline survey, guys, is a survey that is done prior to the project being implemented or at the start of the project implementation. So what you want to do is determine what was there prior to implementation of activities starting. So the reason you do this, okay, why is it important, guys? Why is it important to conduct a baseline survey? Once you know the benchmarks, then you can understand whether you have actually achieved any change. Let's say your baseline, let's say you are trying to measure percentage of people living in poverty. At baseline level, you discover that the percentage of people living in poverty was 60%, okay, which is very high. But then when the project ends after three years, you discover that it has dropped to 50%. So what is the change? The change is 10%. And that change could only be determined because you had a baseline. Mention the step-by-step -step process of conducting the baseline survey. So the step-by-step -step process of conducting a baseline survey is, I'll give you the very basic steps but I would want you to do research. In fact, for all of these questions, you need to do your own research. I'm just giving you the guidance. So step number one, you need to do a desk review. Step number two, identify the indicators. Step number three, develop data collection tools. Step number four, pilot test those tools. Step number five, undertake data collection. Step number six, undertake data entry analysis and report writing. Then step number seven, formulate recommendations. Okay, so number four, mention all the indicators in the project. So this is pretty easy. You just go to the log frame of objectively verifiable indicators these are all your indicators. You just mention all these. You can just copy and paste all these things. Those are your indicators. So mention the non-routine and the routine indicators. So now, guys, the, the routine indicators are those indicators collected regularly. But the non-routine indicators are those indicators that are not collected regularly, which are usually the high-level indicators. So these are usually the non-routine ones, go purpose. But these ones are usually the routine ones. But I have to tell you that for this particular project, you have to be very careful because they may look like they are routine, but in actual sense, these are non-routine, okay? I'll give you an example, number of gen banks established. These gene banks, don't get established all the time. So because they're rarely established, established they become non-routine. So you can debate about this, write to me, and we can try to find the right answers, but that is just what I think about this log frame. Okay, so mention the step-by-step -step process in the development of data collection tools, another easy one. And I think you don't even need to stress about it. You just 
identify the indicators as your first step, and then develop the tools. As simple as that, you can also mention maybe pilot test the tools, take corrective action, and launch the tools, okay? So this has been a short video. I haven't checked the time really, but I think this has been relatively short. Please feel free to download this free, free uh, sample question paper. I don't think this could come in an exam per se, but I think this could be a good assignment. You can also use it in your own, um, if, you are, if you are running an institution, maybe you could use this and it can help a lot. So I've been your host, Coach Alexander. Until we meet again, see you on the other side. Bye.